Like we can get behind that though. That we can now we that's a call. Like we can mess with your parking here on campus. Oh man, we'll march. <laughs> we shall overcome. The simple things, the silly things, the trivial things. College students now, y'all can jump behind that right there, man. Get mad, somebody looked at you foul, somebody, some security guard asked you for your ID. I got asked my ID. You don't think I go to this school? Give me the damn ID, Chief. Look at that simple call. Send me ID. Come why? <laughs> and then you put your headphones on and you got Lil Wayne and Wheezy and Jeezy and Mopey and Dopey and everybody else calling you every kind of nigga in the book. And you didn't download it free, you paid for them. You paid for somebody to call you out your name any old way. But they get mad because a white person might just have learned the same words to the same song that you've been singing. Thought it was cool because y'all hang together, right? You hit nigga, hit your nigga. <laughs> These are the things that you fight for. You waste your time. And as you waste your time, real children are dying. You ain't got to think about hating on this one, y'all. This right here. You can drive to some dead kids right around here. You can go visit them as they're dying, as they're tapping out. Because one of the scariest things to see is a child who has given up. If you have never felt the cold chill of looking into the eyes of an eighth grader who says, I'm done, then you don't know what it's like to be truly afraid. I'm telling you what I'm telling you because you have to do something with this truth. You are too intelligent a people in order for you are too intelligent people for you to not do something about this. Something about this. So we return to our friends in Central Park with their whopping improvement of 93% failure. And all these teachers say, if you don't pay us, we ain't doing it. For real? You really won't stay after school for 25 minutes? Are you serious? It takes you 15 minutes to put your coat on. <laughs> the results are clear. They say, I mean, where's your pride, man? Do you want to be on a team that sucks? <coughs> You're dead last. You have no interest. You honestly believe the only way that someone can believe that this is acceptable is to believe that these children don't deserve more. And here is where the racism comes in. And when I'm talking about racism, let me be clear. Some black folks might be saying, yeah, get the white people. Some white people who might have lost their way. Get the white people. <laughs> no, 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 it's not even like that. I don't do that. That's not my thing. I just, I'm like a rep. I just call them like I see them. They're black and white teachers in this school. When I'm talking about racism, I'm talking about racism, real racism. I'm talking about the insidious kind of racism that makes a black person comfortable seeing a black child not learn and think that somehow his blackness is different than that other person's blackness. That's the kind of racism I'm talking about. It's the kind of racism that makes a very liberal, voted for Obama white person say, well, they're poor and they're black and, you know, they have an achievement gap. But nah, man. Nah, man. You don't get a pass because you're black or because you're liberal or because you voted for Obama. You don't get a pass because it's wrong. If it's not okay for your children, it ain't okay for mine. Real talk. If I come to your house and you got barbecue ribs and you just slabbing them up, you got a bone, right? And we sit down and you pull out a salad and I got ribs in front of me, I'm gonna look at you like, sit down. You ain't eating this. I don't eat that mess. That's a kid. Well then what? You're giving it to me for. <laughs> what do I look like? I would be willing to bet that every single one of the children of the teachers in a school that cannot teach more than 10% of the children. More than 10% of the 
children to master an examination that was created by public school administrators in Rhode Island for Rhode Island public school students <coughs> to be taught by public school teachers can't pass 10%. I bet you ever seen one of their kids can read and pass it. I bet you every single one of their children can pass it. So we know they know how to teach. And in fact, they spend more time with the kids that they're being paid to teach than the ones that they gave birth to. So we know they know how to do it. The question is why don't they? The answer is because they don't have to, because they have a union to protect them that says you don't have to do anything but stay hired. You don't have to produce any result. In fact, in some states, Unions have been so effective that they have made against the law, and this is the truth, against the law to use data to determine their effectiveness. Wow. <laughs> you got to stand back. Even if you ain't on that team, you're like, that's a good one right there. <laughs> wow. So in other words, your job as a teacher, there are a few jobs, by the way, in which it says what you do. Like a doctor, what, what you doctor? I get it. But a teacher, teacher, singer, sing, painters, paint, you get it, right? You follow me now, right? <laughs> Implicit in teaching is learning. Otherwise, it's just talking. So if someone doesn't learn it, then you didn't teach it. So if this building full of teachers is allowed to stay employed as teachers even though they're not teaching, somebody's gotta be letting it happen. And these folks have the audacity to then get the kids riled up about losing the teachers. Please tell me that you understand how disgusting it is to rob a child of his education. In fact, it is illegal. I dare one of you who has a child to keep your child home for two weeks from school without any excuse. Do what I dare you. Mr. Police Officer coming to see you. <laughs> and what she he's gonna say is that's educational neglect, which is a crime in all 50 states. Every single state in the union and some of our territories. It is against the law. Compulsory education is the law of the land. It is seen as a basic human right. The civil rights movement began as a fight for educational access. <coughs> Brown versus Board of Education. The civil rights movement at its core was about access because it's understood back to the pursuit of happiness that in fact there's a direct correlation between a person lifelong happiness and the capacity to pursue it when they get more education. The greater the access to education, the greater the opportunity to live a fulfilled life. When you steal, and I do mean steal, when you steal a child's opportunity to have access to an education, because if you're being paid to teach somebody, they, they're right in front of you, you gotta go, why not give it a shot? And they would say, oh, but we work hard. Listen, let me explain something to you. If I went to a basketball gym and I shot 200 free throws for one calendar year, I would not become a professional basketball player. Some people just can't teach. Just because you have a degree in teach doesn't mean you teach. Doesn't mean it at all. In fact, there's no proof that you can, in fact, do it. The only proof is the proof. Children. So if the children cannot be used as evidence for your ability to teach, then we have no proof. All we have is your word. I said it. I taught it. Look at my lesson plan. And when you go in, it, just say, it does say, yeah, you know, you're teaching in fractions today. Except for the fact you can't deliver the lesson. And the children are not learning. 